the, the next process or this next step in the financing process is investor onboarding. This is the closing process, mm-hmm. getting the investors money into uh, the company. And so there's a few steps here. Uh, this obviously happens after due diligence. It, the due diligence boxes have been checked. This is taking the terms and structure that were negotiated in the term sheet getting them documented and then getting everybody signed up. Mm -hmm. And so this is um, the the traditional model is you've got a preferred stock financing with very customized legal documents. Those legal documents are complex to draft. There's uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Lawyers are, uh, you know, racking up the bill just to give you an idea of what this looks like a standard, Preferred stock financing is on what we call the NVCA documents. National Venture Capital Association, the NVCA, has put out some somewhat standardized documents uh, to try and streamline preferred stock financings. These documents, there's five of them, five what we call transaction agreements for each financing that's on an NVCA uh, form, which is most VC deals from Series A and beyond. Mm-hmm. So... These five documents are each between 15 and 30 pages. Each of them is being drafted and reviewed by by lawyers. Uh, That's a lot of time spent drafting documents. They are somewhat standardized, but when we say standardized, I'm talking about the NBCA puts out a template that has 200 footnotes with this could go here or here. This could go this way or that way. This, This could be, you know, you could have this term or that term. And so there's, even though they're standardized, they're still very negotiable. So that's traditional documentation. Once those documents are done, you've got your law firm is going to be using their paralegals and their associates to go out and collect stockholder signatures, board of director signatures, any safes that you've got out there that are converting into this round. You've got to get the safe holder signatures um, and you've got to get signatures from every current investor. Most investors are going to be coming in directly, meaning they sign the document themselves, give you the money, and they are on your cap table. This ends up, this process, the closing process, the signature collection process takes several days at the least a week or more, depending on how many signatures you've got to get. And if people are, you know, you're dealing with investors. These are people who are well off. They might be in Hawaii. They might be in the Bahamas. They might be in Italy. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get a hold of them to get their, their signatures. It's not the sort of thing where you send out a DocuSign to a team member and they sign it within 30 seconds. You know, you got to get let, collect these signatures. Yeah. Paralegals and associates are, are churning those billable hours, billing you for this process. And they churn those billable hours whether the investment actually ends up going through or not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's Even if you don't close money. the deal. Yeah, the money if you don't the close the deal. Yet. So you're you're racking that up even before. And as we know, if you are a founder, if you haven't raised, you know, you can get all the way to that final spot, even have signed things. But if it's not a signed contract, all the things in place, the diligence, all of this and the money, it's not a deal. It's not a done deal. <laughs> exactly. And and, you know. Uh, I'm, we mentioned here mes- the messy cap table after you close around, depending on how many investors you're bringing on. So we've talked about, okay, lead investor comes in, takes in most of the, most of the round, but you fill out the round with other folks. How many folks are you, you filling out the round with? If it's one or two, that's not a problem. But if you're going out and you have five, 10, 15 strategic advisors or strategic angel investors who are, you know, you want to have on your cap table because they have, you know, good connections or they're going to introduce you to their pipeline or whatever. That's great, but then managing that cap table after the rounds closed, you've now expanded the number of line items on there, the people you have to reach out to, the people you have to get stockholder signatures from, and it gets a little bit messy. So let's compare that to what we call the, the, a more agile approach to the investor onboarding, so part of the agile fundraising strategy. Mm-hmm. So signatures, there's a lot of e-signature tools out there. Mm-hmm. Lawyers don't aren't incentivized to use them because it reduces their billable hours. But For founder, there are platforms. Founder <laughs> exactly. Founders, you can actually tell your attorneys, hey, I'm going to collect my signatures. You don't need to worry about it. You get the documents finalized. There's not much you can do 
in in a big preferred stock financing to reduce the the drafting fees. You've got to get good legal documents. But remember that in an agile fundraising, we're trying to use safes and convertible notes. That's a one page or a one. That's one document that's maybe five at most ten pages uh, that you're drafting. That's a lot better than that big NVCA traditional preferred stock round. So in your agile rounds. If you're using convertible securities to close the rounds, you're not going to be paying uh, attorneys to draft much, if anything. Yeah. And then the, the closing process, you're managing that through a platform. Uh, again, Savvy has a platform that, that allows you to collect signatures from investors on any type of financing. And you just put in the name and the email address of the investor. It sends it to them along with the data room link, collects their signature, everything is streamlined. So that is a lot better process than law firms and para, uh, law firm paralegals and associates billing you by the hour to draft emails, generate DocuSigns, monitor that process. Uh, the other aspect of Agile that I'll mention is this messy, this is an, uh, uh, this addresses the messy cap table issue, which is the, the roll-up vehicles or the special purpose vehicles using an SPV, which is an entity set up specifically to hold um, an investment in your company. And then if you have 5, 10, 15 of these angel investors or smaller investors who, want, who you want to invest and who want to invest in you, you have them invest through an SPV or a roll-up vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then on your cap table, you only have one line item that oh represents God. all those folks. And so your cap table is so much cleaner. Um, it's pretty easy to do these roll-up vehicles, these SPVs. Uh, very simple process to set that up. There's a number of platforms. Again, Savvy has a tool like this. Yeah. AngelList has a, a tool like this. So there's a number of tools to streamline this for you. Um, and it makes your cap table a lot cleaner. Now, you yeah. still have the SPV's cap table, which somebody has to manage. Sometimes you can kind of get a lead angel investor who takes the initiative to say, yeah, I'll be the guy that, that manages this relationship and, and, and manages the SPV. But, um, you know, it, it does simplify the company's cap table at least. And, and then you know, just good for, for future rounds, because again, some investors or some VCs or some things you have to think about that next round if you are going a certain route and you've asked these great questions of the investor, Hey, what do you typically like to see? Do you mind if there's a lot of people on the cap table? You know, some funds and some investors may have a preference say, Hey, look, we don't want to deal with a million, you know, crowdfunding individuals. We want to have, you know, we want to see it all fewer is better for us. So, you know, you got to think strategically. This is not just, Hey, is it look better on the sheet for you? Um, this is, what are the preferences of the investors who are in? What do they like to see? These are your absolutely. People. And what is the next round? The next set of investors. Um, it may be different for them. So you know, I think roll up is there's so much tactical benefit, time saving. Uh, you know, the cost. It's clean. It's organized. You know, there's a lot of benefits there. Um, but you also have to think about the human side, which is okay. Oh yeah. Is this a preference? Is it going to help me on the next round? Is this going to hurt me on the next round? So that's something only you'll know and you have to really think about. One thing I'll mention at this point, and it, this applies to the structure and terms and planning steps that we went over. It, it goes through due diligence. Um, and it, it, it also applies here to the investor onboarding. The preference between traditional and agile oftentimes isn't your decision. It, it's it's what the investors will require. And just keep in mind what one of my old law firm partners used to call the golden rule. He who has the gold sets the rules. So you're looking to get money. You need money to grow. Um, and if you have an investor who's willing and wanting to invest in you, but they want a more traditional preferred stock round Maybe rather than your like agile. Yeah. Yeah, it might be a deal breaker. Or they, want, they don't want to go through a roll-up vehicle. Or they want, you know, a more traditional due diligence. They want their law firm to spend a little bit more time rather than just kind of, you know, checking a few boxes. That's their that's their prerogative. They can make that decision. And you're looking for their money. And if they're putting enough money in, it's always in your best interest to do what they want. Now, if this is an investor who's putting in fifty thousand dollars, 
And they're going to cause you, they're the only ones asking for a lot more thorough due diligence review. Which and it's going to cost you <laughs> yeah. 25 or maybe even $50,000 just to do that. Yeah. You have to weigh those costs. Yeah. But that is something to keep in mind. Yeah. This is, this is why the strategic um, high level look at everything is so important because you're evaluating what your options are. How can you save money? How can you increase your valuation? How can you, you know, make sure it's a win-win for everybody. The investors are getting what they want so that they go forward. It's a balancing act, but hopefully the side-by-side -side workshop, thinking about your company, writing these things down, reviewing it, you know, this is, this is why we wanted to really dive in so much on all these slides because um, in the end, it will make a huge difference and it, it just sets the foundation um, for what it's going to be like moving forward. Exactly. Savvy, uh, we partner with WeTransact to give you guys a number of tools and services to make your lives as founders easier and better throughout your, you know, your, your venture's life cycle from formation to fundraising, even to exit. And so we offer a number of tools on a SaaS platform that you get to take advantage of in a DIY, you get to access it and use it as much as you want or need. Uh, I'll show you what some of those tools are, or I'll talk about them. And then we also offer services in conjunction with those tools that you can take advantage of as well. And I'll, I'll explain some of what those are uh, and shortly. So we have a number of different products. We have Savvy Go, Savvy Raise, and Savvy Exit. These are packages of tools that you access on a SaaS platform that you can use depending on the, the stage of your company. So if you are um, just starting out, you know, at a pre-seed level, we have a number of services that you can take advantage of depending on what you're needing. We have subscriptions that you can use. And these services are, you know, your entity formation, getting your org documents set up, getting your entity entity filed with different states, getting bank accounts set up, getting your founder documents set up, your cap table set up, your option pool set up. This is all stuff we we um, label as, hey, you need to do this pre fundraising. This is uh, basic foundational stuff for your company, and we want to give this to you as, as easy and as cheap as possible. You can get access to our tools through a, a subscription on Savvy. We also have add-on services. So if you have questions about, well, what if I wanna be an LLC or a C Corp, what, which of those is best? Why should I be a Delaware corporation if I'm gonna be raising money? What if I'm already an LLC and need to convert it to a corporation? We have add-on services that we can give you quotes for to help provide those. If you actually wanna hop on a call with an attorney and, and get that counsel and, and hand-holding or a white glove experience, we can provide those services as well. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll share how you can schedule with our, our team to um, you know, talk about the pricing of that and what that looks like. Just a heads up, a, as a WeTransact company, if you sign up for a Savvy subscription, you also will get some credits towards some of these services and we'll share what that looks like. And so that's a Savvy Go level. Oh, that's uh, for savvy, I didn't even know about that one, so I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some, some credits that you can take advantage of if you're a WeTransact company. So um, Savvy Raise is a bundle of tools and services that is meant for somebody who's raising money. Awesome. So we have a number of self-serve tools that you can get access to on our platform if you're on a subscription. So safes and convertible notes, everything from board consents to approve those financings, the term sheets that you would need to generate to share with the investors, the signature collection process. Mm -hmm. We have some dil due diligence reports that you can actually fill out to share with investors so that you don't have to go through a law firm to, to answer all those questions. You can go through our diligence report process and share it with the investors directly to wow. skip over all of those transaction fees that, that, in, that firms charge you to develop a diligence report. You're, you'll have the ability to generate data rooms um, for your investors and share those data rooms with investors for ongoing reporting. Um, one thing I'll mention is we have a, a library of templates, mm -hmm. templates for employee onboarding, you know, equity agreements, board and stockholder consents, all these things that you want to be able to do. We have a library of templates. We call them workflows. And you'll get access to that on our platform, depending on what you're looking to do. Um, you know, if you have a very custom document, we may not have a template for it, 
but we could automate it for you. So there's some customization that we can do. Um, those roll-up vehicles, the, the SPVs that we talked about, we have workflows for like, you to be able to set those up as well and have investors invest through an SPV. Um, and then on the service side, we have counsel, paralegals who can provide financing counsel and financing admin services. We're, uh, we are a fraction of the cost for um, compared to um, your standard law firm. So our, we work with financing counsel partners who work under the savvy model, meaning they're going to use the platform to streamline signature collection data rooms. They're not going to be churning billable hours on your financing. Um, if you engage with our partner law firms, they're going to, you're going to get an, an efficient and effective financing experience. We have ongoing paralegal subscriptions as well for folks who, hey, I don't want to maintain my cap table or, or I need somebody to help me maintain my cap table. That ongoing, what we call corporate compliance, we can, you can have a paralegal that's uh, at a subscription price to be able to do that sort of things. So we have a number of services to go with your financing al along with the SaaS tools. Yeah. And we will, we will share with WeTransact kind of some demos that, that they can put out there so that you can go and, and see what a, the Savvy platform looks like and how to use it. Yeah. Um, but that is, that is what Savvy offers. Um, we want to make that available to the WeTransact companies. We are offering up to $1,200 in credit, depending on your subscriptions that you get on, that credit may be lower. It could even be higher, and depending on what services you're looking to do. So um, this is actually, it says here you need to schedule a call by December 31st. This is actually an open offer for we transact companies. So regardless of when you have your financing coming down the road, you can schedule with our onboarding team. So this QR code takes you to a calendar link if you want to just scan that. Uh, otherwise, we'll also have, you'll be able to contact our, our onboarding team to talk about the pricing, the price points, the different services, what that looks like. Um, and the WeTransact site will be able to, you'll be able to access that contact information through the site. So that is, um, that's it for, you know, our, our high level overview of what you get as a WeTransact company through the Savvy partnership. Um, so hopefully um, that's been helpful. Yes, my and, goodness, it's it's more than helpful. I mean, this is exciting because it you know, one thing we loved from the first time we met with your team was uh you really understand startups and entrepreneurs and um that you know, that's not always something every law firm has a specialty in um and that is something here as your experience as a founder, you can really empathize. You've really understood all the kind of danger points, the red flag points, all the areas that could be improved and what you've developed with Savvy and your team is fantastic because it's like you're wearing both hats. You're able to say, hey, this would be a lot better for the founder. This is more, this is what's affordable at this stage. And, you know, understanding that like there's a lot that a founder, a resourceful founder can do on their own uh, and having a SaaS that starts you on the right path hopefully helps you avoid those um pitfalls and then growing with you and and really being able to have a SaaS product um because not all founders i think get the legal advice they need at the moment they need it most it's it's knowing it but knowing the information before you need it <laughs> it's um you know but having these strategies so that you don't end up at a place where you got to pay to get out of so to speak <laughs> it was more costly than exactly yeah yep no that's exactly that's exactly it so hopefully we can you know get you guys what you need and we'd love to talk to you even just yeah. to explore what you're looking for see if we can we can get you what you need so uh, yeah. thanks everybody for your time Thank you so really? much. It was, it was wonderful having you on. We'll break it all up. We'll make sure everybody has everything. There's going to be a lot of resources coming along the way. As Dan and his team have updates, we'll be sure to post that as well. And thank you, Dan, so much for taking your time uh, to really go through this and, and answer a lot of the questions that founders are probably needing to ask right now as they plan for their raise. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> have a good one. Thank you.